to how to Yu-Gi-Oh! Grade Core Set Photon Hypernova. In this video, I'm going to be, you know, it's going to be a set review where we will grade the set for Yu-Gi-Oh! Realism and we'll see how that goes. So that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. And just before I enter, as you can see, I've just got the initial frame of my Phantom Knight's Breaksword costume. Yeah. The sword will be uh, seeing about making that. Anyways, let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, and so we have, as you see in front of the screen there, Archetype Potential, Gold Pride at 50%. That is the amount of potential that it has. We look at the archetype and we see great things here. We see great things indeed. What made you get to that assumption? Um, it's got a nice stable base. It's There's good things going for it from what we can see from the first wave. Um, its potential shows 50%. Will it deliver though? Will it be able to do something in YCS Leon? You know, in the 13th? We don't know. Um, what we do know is that that's the potential that Gold Pride has. It's a premier archetype in this set, TCG exclusive. We'll see what happens. Loads of uh, premier archetypes so far over the recent years have not really done much since like 2014 there when we had uh, the premiere of um, Burning Abyss. And I think 2017 when we had Spirals. But outside of these two TCG archetypes, nothing has really come in and shaken uh, the meta for TCG archetypes, really. But we shall see. Okay, so let's talk about the things you see there here. So we'll talk about a wild challenger. What do I call a wild challenger? Wild challenger is an archetype, I feel, archetype that's come out in a set, i.e. in Photon Hypernova, that I feel can challenge the meta. Uh, can enter into the meta con seemingly, seemingly unopposed and do some damage. And I think Gold Pride is that thing. Is it? It's looking good. I think it can enter the meta. I, I have faith in it. Will it top? No, but maybe, you know, some mixture of it can, can do something. Um, let's see what else. We have uh, a wild, wild, you know, wild card. We have triple tactics, uh, thrusting. Do you have to say it that way? And Waybridge. Personally, I have a bit more faith in Waybridge than uh, Thrusting. What do I mean by wild card again? Wild card is just a card that comes out in a set, and and uh, we, as a, I, as a community, me myself, and the community, we feel that it will have a great impact and just enter the competitive scene and just completely take the meta by storm. And I definitely think uh, these two cards, Thrusting. Do you have to say it that way? And Triple Tactics Thrusting and Waybridge have a chance of doing that. I have more so with Waybridge because it's easy to activate. It's, you know, it's a power trap. We like our power traps and uh, yeah. Thrusting is good, but I feel it will, my personal opinion, I feel it will fade out. It is a bit tricky to use. Um, there's only, we can say, one deck that can use it. It's not a card that every deck can use. You really got to use your brain. It really feels like we're reinventing the wheel here with this card. That is not to say it is not a, it's not a, uh, it's a bad card. It's got great range and, uh, you know, powerful range. I'll talk more about this in a separate video with the Triple Tactics card. Anyways, moving on, we go to value card. So the money card of this set, as of this moment, we can say is Pressured Planet Wraith, Wraith Song. Um, this may change in the future, but I think this is a card that's going to hold true to that value for the foreseeable future. It's a great value card. Definitely raises um, the potential of this set up to a great set. So we like that. We like that a lot. And then let's go for Legacy Support as you see here. So great Legacy Support we have here is Planet Patrol and Yishki need to talk about Planet Patrol because Planet Patrol got some support here that's really elevated this deck and really changed this uh, changed the deck to a whole new uh, level. Um, that's really very important and it's changed the deck in a way that it's completely un... Uh, is it unrecognizable? No, but it's changed it to a way that it's decent. It can make decent
decent boards, decent things, and we like that. But the deck that's had the most change, definitely, I can say, is Gishki. If we if we look at the Gishki support now, uh, and uh, to compare to what it was before, it is a massive change, mm, absolutely massive, with cards that allow you to just not do effects once per turn. Yes, it is quite of a big loss in the latest ban list that we have lost Elf because Gishki was abusing Elf to help it um, survive. Facts. But you know, leaving uh, the Elf abuse aside. Every comes every deck mostly was abuse and elf, so elf abuse is not really new here. But yeah, great legacy support. I could definitely say it's Plum Patrol and Gishki. We like that. We like that a lot. So this is great legacy support. Let's uh, move on. Okay, and so we'll talk about uh, support update. So what is a support update? Support update is uh, an archetype that's come out in a previous set and is getting update in this current set. And so, some of the great support updates we're getting are Kashtera, Branded, Despia, Terraments, Chaos, and Therion. Kashtera being the biggest one. Kashtera's support has really changed this deck completely. The second wave of support makes it completely unrecognizable from the deck it was before. With the new support and the new things that it can do, it is and it, it's looking to be a hot favorite in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Awards for being the best archetype of 2023, winning that award. So definitely there's a lot of high expectations for Kestera to be the best archetype of the year, winning that award. There's loads of things going for this archetype. So yeah, we have Branded. Branded looking to be the um, archetype to usurp, possibly defeat Kestera. If we get a ba uh, ban list, you know, midway through the year, we've already have a ban list here, another one. Definitely a hot favorite to defeat the current the current king emerging that we feel emerging in Kashtera. Yeah, Despia of the same vein. We have Tier Elements. Do not, uh, yes, uh, Tier Elements have been affected by the ban list, but that doesn't mean it's out just yet. Um, Telemans got new support with Kashtera, with Tia Kashtera. They've got Paraplegia, that's a new Telemans field spell. They also have, um, uh, you know, Rates off as well. Might as well be Telemans support. There's loads of, uh, Telemans isn't dead by no stretch of their imagination. The ban list has just made it a bit more skillful. Um, it is a bit more vulnerable. But it doesn't, you know, it has lost a bit. But I feel like it, you know, Telemans, it, it, it has been a tier zero deck. It can dominate. Maybe it can, maybe it won't. But the support that it's gotten is not to be ignored here. It's been some actually fantastic support. And tier, Telemans has to be some one of the few decks that every way of support that it's got has been absolutely phenomenal. So don't count that out. We have the Chaos uh, support. The Chaos support in this set is not really being talked about, but I feel is great support and has really elevated Chaos as a uh, archetype to a whole new level. And um, people are not talking about that. Yes, we do get a Synchro 10 that comes out in uh, Cyberstorm Access in a few months from now, but leaving Cyberstorm Access aside, leaving all that nonsense aside, Let's not discount what we have here. What we have here is a great foundation here of something special, of something a bit spicy. You could mix this with your Dragon Link. You could um, and do some crazy, crazy stuff here. There is a good base here for some serious, serious deck building, some serious, serious creativity, and something here that is not to be ignored. And finally, we have Therion with the XYZ Sargus. Um, we Sargus came, you know, in um, in, a, in a sets prior, which is Spring and Sargus, but we have Sargus coming out again in clutch as an XYZ now, and it is for uh, Spriggans, but it allows you to add any Theron card from the deck to the hand. Also, lore wise, Sargus has merged with Regulus and Theron. If we look at the, if we look at uh, Sargus' effect, we can see that it's merged, it's fusioned with, uh, 
Ethereum Regulus. Hence why it can search Regulus and hence why uh, in the lore anyways it's defeated Sprite. But leaving that aside, the boards that uh, Spriggans makes now is extremely respectable, ex extremely decent. And I have to say that Spriggans are, are really the deck to watch out for and can really do, maybe we can see do some surprise tops and they can do something special there. They're not to be sneezed at, not to be looked at. We need to, they've entered, I could say, the big boy table and we definitely need to look out for that their support has been fantastic. And then we have hype, Photon Hypernova. This has to be said, in terms of hype, Photon Hypernova have been, has been absolutely fantastic. Throughout the board, throughout the community, it has been heralded to be a really good set. Um, are cards expensive in this set? Absolutely. But that is not to say that there's not been a card for everyone. Whether it's one of the super rare spells uh, that we have there that we can use for mirror, uh, you know, for the mirror matches, whether it's the card called Cardan Farsighted that allows you to act to activate any continuous spell from continuous trap, sorry, from your hand or graveyard, not to be ignored here. Some really powerful cards here that are low rarity here that no one's ever heard about. We've got some really, really powerful stuff here that we can uh, that we can be using for our decks. Yes, Kashtira has been taking um, you know a spot and has been really dominant with the support update. But do not be fooled. Do not be mistaken here. There's some powerful cards in this set, and it definitely warrants this hype. And finally, we have a good reprint. So far, there's no good reprint in this set. Uh, but that does not uh, d uh, excuse of this set being so good. Okay, and so we come to the final grade of Photon Hypernova. The final grade, I can say, for this set is an astonishing A. That's an amazing grade. A for amazing, A for absolutely... That's all we can say, amazing. So what makes... So let's review this. What makes this set so amazing? Well, first of all, it's just simply because there's lots of cards in this set that we can be used. Um, whether it's your high value cards or your low value cards, there's something in this set for everyone. We have some new powerful uh, power cards that have come into the game, some being high rarity again, some being low rarity, and there's some cards in this set that can surprise you. We have uh, support updates for, uh, for archetypes, that have really gotten a substantial increase in playability and support. They play in completely different ways. Some support uh, updates we've had have really re uh, reinvigorated some decks. We have legacy support again that's really changed the foundation of some of these legacy archetypes that we've had. Um, are they the best? No, but we got to remember that they've changed these fundamental uh, decks that have had the support in a completely fundamental way when compared to how they played before it is completely different there's something here for everyone there's something here everyone can find everyone can use and so with all that in mind with everything we take everything into account and with the hype that this uh set has got it stands to reason that grade a having a grade of a being amazing yep it suits it quite fine Okay, let's go to get on with the next part of the video where I'll be talking about the, where the Yu-Gi-Oh! Award and the confirmed winners for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Award which I'll be hosting later in the year. Okay, and so we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Award confirmed winners. And one of those is... Random Top Award goes to Mikanko. Wow, it's a bit of a shock, it's a bit of a mind melt. So how did we get to this point? How did Mikanko from Rescue Ace, you know, the amazing defenders, which came out just last month, which I was heralding to be the worst set of the year and possibly winning that award, how did one of those archetypes with a, with a potential rating of 40%, how did we get to this point and how did it actually top? Well, we have our mad lad Gabe here in the first ever regionals 
of TCG topping with Nikanko. Since it was completely unexpected and not in our, their right minds expected Mikanko to top, it gets the first award, first confirmed award in Yu-Gi-Oh! Awards, which is a random top, which is Mikanko. It also wins another award, which is One Hit Wonder, Mikanko again. I do feel that this is the only time Mikanko is going to win, uh, is going to top in the TCG. I don't think it's going to top again, but who knows? Maybe Mikanko is, is going to be winning some more uh, awards in the future. Definitely look out for this section when I'm doing, um, you know, set reviews, as I will always have a Yu-Gi-Oh! Award confirmed winners, which will be, which, and all these awards here will be repeated again in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Awards, and we'll see which will have the archetypal deck that have the most awards. And finally, we have the regional top award, Mikanko. So with three awards, goes to Mikanko. Wow, already we have a archetype from Amazing Defenders being quite amazing, literally, and winning three awards straight off the bat. No questions asked, just kicking some ass. God damn. Right. Okay, let's move on. Okay, and so we have the Yu-Gi-Oh! Award candidates' favorites. So, for best wild cards of 2023 candidates, this includes Triple Tactic Thrusting and Waybridge. First, let's talk about why these cards are candidates to win this award. Um, Triple Tactics, Thrusting, and Waybridge have potential to win this award. Are the confirmed winners? Not really. We need to really see the next core sets of the year and make a uh, discussion with that. So how am I going to determine what is going to win the award in the end in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Awards and what will make it a confirmed winner? Well, what it's going to be is that when all the core sets have been uh, confirmed so on the last core set of the year i will do a you obviously set review on it as i've done this one and the wild cards in the previous sets the one that has the highest usage and the highest top in tcg tournaments will be the winner from the set that it's used so if it's triple tactic tasking so if we reach the lock, for example, triple tactic, uh, tactic thrusting, if it's the uh, card that we see in the most tops uh, with each concurring set that comes out, then it's going to unanimously win that award. If it's Waybridge, the same thing. So the card with the highest top. And the other cards, if they're used or not used, if they're used, they'll, they'll get a nomination. If not used, they won't be mentioned at all. And so that's essentially it. And so we have the best core set candidate, we have Photon Hypernova. Now, for Photon Hypernova to win the award, I think it can. It's a candidate, but I think it's a very strong candidate. There's a lot of things going on for this set. It has a grade of A, so it's really, really strong, already strong right off the bat. There's a lot of things this set offers. I feel it can take it home. I feel it can win that award and definitely be the best core set of the year in fact i can be i feel it can be the best set of 2023 it can win double awards double whammy there's loads of potential for this set uh, to win just double awards in the yugi award we'll see whether it can get a confirmed win in the uh, next uh course set video but you know outside of that yeah good strong potential let's move on to the next slide we have the best core set hype candidate, which is 2023. Again, we say Photon Hypernova. Um, I say this because, again, there's loads of uh, potential in this set. Let us look at the community's reaction to this set. The hype for this set has been unreal. The buyouts and everything else, it's been absolutely phenomenal. But as you know, you've got to put your metal where your mouth is. If this set is to win this award of being the best hyped set of the year it needs to prove itself so in the last course set of the year we need to see cards i need to see personally cards from this set have the highest usage and have the highest top in tcg tournaments right the most and the mass usage of photon hypernova cards they need to be in uh, tcg tournaments We'll see whether it's going to win this prestigious award. 
There's going to be loads of things uh, we'll talk about. We'll see if it will get one step closer to being a confirmed winner in the next Corsa video. But outside of that, I feel it's a strong candidate. I think it can win this award. I feel it's a shoe in but we don't know yet. We really don't know, and we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at that quite closely in the next Corsa. So let's go over to the next slide. We have the best value card candidate and which is Pressured Planet Raid Sword. Now, currently, obviously, Pressured Planet Raid Sword has the advantage of when its value has shot up. We've had a ban list recently, so its value is just has gone completely, completely uh, crazy. But, you know, leaving that aside, I think it can be the best value card of the year, of 2023. I think it can manage it. I think it can do it. Um, it's very versatile. You can use it in tier elements. You can uh, use it for whatever engine that you want to use it for. It's not a dead card by any stretch of the imagination. The Kashtira package, I would say, is extremely powerful, extremely great. And, uh, you know, hopping on a fan rare, being able to touch a fan rare from your deck to your hand, add it from deck to your hand, is great. So, yeah, there's loads of potential there. Kashtira package is not to be ignored here. It definitely has, uh, it adds a lot of value into your deck, a lot of value to the game, and a lot of uh, diversity. Not really, but you get the general idea. So, I think it can win the best value card of the year. But again, this is going to have to do with prices. So, although it is a candidate, we're going to have to see with the next core set. If we get a card that gets more expensive than Pla uh, Pressured Planet Raid Soft in the next core set, which is, uh, I believe... Cyber Storm access, Pressured Planet will lose its candidate position and will be put as a nomination in the UG Awards and the card mentioned in uh, Cyber Storm Access will take its place. So yeah, it's hanging by a thread here. It's gonna have to prove it. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. And I think that's it. So we have no more uh, slides to, uh, to look into there. And I think we come at the end of this uh, set review. Hopefully you've enjoyed this set review and hopefully you've seen, uh, you know, whether you're going to get this set. I feel overall this is a good set. Photonic Bonobo is a great set. It's a set that I think is for, is for everyone. There's loads of uh, key cards here for the competitive players and for the casual players. There's something here for everyone. There's loads of cards that are valuable in here, whether they are, whether they have a high, whether they have a high value or very expensive or low value and are quite cheap. There's some, especially in the cheap uh, category, super rare. There's some really amazing super rares in this set that you really, we, you really need to pay attention to because they have some, some really, really um, great effects there. One of them being, for example, as I say, Cardan the Far Sighted. Um, it's a level four Earth Fairy. With the effect of you can activate uh, you know a continuous trap from your hand or graveyard there is definitely something special with a card like that with an effect like that so there's some cards in this set are like that they we can see their potential we can see uh the the ways we can use this card so don't discount this set just yet don't discount those rares and commons in this set there's some seriously good effects okay that's all i've got to say See you next time in the next course set grading video. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.